Now, we all know about Elijah, and we know how, what Elijah did, and then we also know that he picked up a right-hand man called Elisha. And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, okay, uh, you've asked a hard thing, but if you see me when I go, then it'll happen. And the strange thing is, if you read the story, they knew the day it was going to happen. They all knew the sons of the prophets were there. They all said, don't you know today is the day uh, that the Lord's going to take your master? And Elisha basically said, shut up and mind your own business. That's essentially what he said. Now, when Elijah was taken, because Elisha said he wanted double portion, Elijah had performed 16 miracles. Now, later on, up until Elisha's death, Elisha had performed 31 miracles. How many of you know 16 times 2 is not 31? It's close, but it's 32. Is that right? God's not a close God. He's an exact God. Amen? Actually, he's even a more than enough God, but we'll talk about that later maybe. But the amazing thing was, Elisha died, now get this, not having received the promise, which is exactly what Hebrews 11 tells us, that they all died not having received the promise. We'll talk about that in a second also. Now, so Elisha dies with 31 miracles. Then, a few years later, uh, some people take a dead man out, take him out to bury him. While they're out there looking for a tomb, they see some enemy soldiers. So they get scared, and they just throw this dead body in the first open tomb they find, which happened to be Elisha's. Now, it says that whenever he went, when they threw the body in, and it touched the bones of Elisha, the dead man came alive and came running out. Now get this, they were running for their life, and the dead man passed them. <laughs> now that would make you wonder which way you're supposed to run. I mean, who wants to chase after the dead guy, right? So, <clears throat> they, now a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people preach on that. And I thank God for my time with Dr. Sumrall because he opened up our eyes to a lot of things like this. But notice this. A lot of people say that was the anointing on the bones of Elisha. Okay. Bones don't need an anointing. Okay. What that story tells us is not about the anointing. Matter of fact, the anointing isn't even mentioned there. What's amazing and what that story is about is God's faithfulness to his word. He kept, God is so faithful to his word, he kept his word to a dead man. Why? That means after he died, God remembered and still accomplished the 32nd miracle. Now, if God will keep his word to a dead man, hopefully most of you here still breathing. That means you've even got a kind of a heads up on that. So you can trust God. You can trust God to keep his word. 